All right, hi guys, this is episode three of Ask M. My name is Emily Schramm, and I'm excited because today will be the highest quality video we have had yet. So we've had some audio issues, we've had some film issues, but now I have my awesome man, Blake, behind the camera from Gorilla Capturing. So thank you, Blake, for helping me out. Um, episode three, we have great things we're gonna talk about. So today we're gonna talk about AdvoCare products, deodorant, <laughs> this is random, bacon, overhead mobility, and collagen. So I'll just kind of go over the questions. If you have questions for me throughout the week, all you have to do is hashtag ask M and tag me in your photo, your video, whatever it might be on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And every Thursday, I will be answering your questions and we will release the new episode on Mondays. So hopefully I give you guys all the answers you need um, to help sustain your awesome lifestyle and become the superhero that you are. So M Amazing, I like your name, Amazing053, asked about some overhead mobility tips. So we're actually gonna start with a little bit more of some workout stuff. So trying to do an overhead squat, which you guys have sometimes seen with me on Instagram, or a snatch is kind of a complex move where you have to have a ton of mobility. And so it's very frustrating because it's not about strength, it's about flexibility and it can be flexibility with your ankles, with your hips, and then especially with your shoulders, even your back. Um, the overhead squat is kind of the true test of how your mobility is. Are you able to keep this bar over your head? So you guys can try this today. And this is really fun to do with a Swiffer stick of some, some sort, but put your bar overhead if you've never done this move before. And as you squat with your hips going back and your knees going out, see if you can keep that bar behind your head. So not above your head, behind your head, and see how well you can stay in your heels. And the issue with a lot of people is this kind of happens. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is show you some of my favorite moves to help with that mobility. The first one is just taking some sort of stick and doing some pass-throughs. And you can do this um, hands close or hands far, and some of this is really challenging for people. So some people have to start pretty hot, pretty far apart, and trying to go as far back as you can, keeping your arms straight. What you can do from here is go around the worlds, trying to open up the pec minor, pec major, the shoulder muscles, upper back a little bit. And then you can try just passing behind your head, see how that feels, loosening that up. If that feels okay, then we start by adding a squat with the mix. So squatting, pressing back down, and that's gonna be a really good position for a lot of people. Some people will have to go a little wider, keeping your chest up, seeing if you can still pass through and squat, and then more advanced, squatting, chest is high, seeing if you can do a couple more of these while you're staying in the squat, and then even more advanced, holding the squat and doing some pass-throughs. So those are just some exercises that can help with your overhead. With the PVC, you can also do this really great stretch for um, some rotation. That's just a different stretch than what people are used to. Put your hand here and move out. That feels good. My shoulders are tight today. We like did so many shoulders this week. Holy, holy handstand push-ups. <laughs> um, Another great one is taking a PVC over to a rig or a cage or a doorway and stepping through. So I feel this all right here. And that's gonna help keep that position as my squat, whew, as my squat goes down. It's gonna keep my chest out, keep my shoulders engaged. There's about a million overhead squat mobility moves you can do because it really involves every muscle group. So just keep doing them. Don't get frustrated if you're struggling with overhead squats. Um, the more you work on mobility, the better it's gonna be. Um, so those are my favorites. Cool. 
Thank you, Emily. This is a great question from Naustronaut, which is a fun Instagram handle. He said, how much bacon is too much bacon? And that is a great question. I started my blog, Bacon and Skinny Jeans, almost five years ago. I'll have to check, but it's been a long time. I love bacon, and when I first heard about paleo, the reason I was so intrigued is because I was allowed to eat regular bacon, not turkey bacon. So I'm all about bacon. Um, how much is too much? The problem with people, for me to say bacon is okay, is bacon is only okay when your grams, are un grams of carbohydrates are under a certain amount. So a high fat diet is amazing, um, but not in combination of a high carb diet. That's when things get very dangerous, cells get glycated and so they can become sticky. Um, that's when things like heart disease happens. So high fat diets work, but you have to be very conscious of your carbohydrate content. So the best thing to do is maybe one day check your MyFitnessPal or some sort of calorie counting tracker and see how many grams of carbs are you eating. And that'll vary from person to person, but paleo, if you're eating vegetables, um, some, some starches coming from maybe plantains or fruit or from potatoes, you're going to be pretty, pretty low carb. I think the highest I've ever been consciously eating good carbs was like 175 grams of carbs. So if you're under 200 grams, then yes, you could have bacon every day. If you're going above that or you're kind of on the border, be careful with your bacon because the last thing I want is to say, bacon's good, have it as much as you want, but then also combining that with more sugars, um, your body's not going to like it and your body, not just more, it's more than just weight loss, but um, or weight gain, it's really gonna dam damage your cells. And so be smart about that. High carb, high fat is not good. High fat, low carb is what I'm all about. Bacon should be coming from a fantastic source. Make sure the pigs are happy. You don't want any, like pork is known to be terrible for you. And that's usually because it's like, if you've ever seen those videos of what pigs live in and what they're fed, it's really awful. So please be cognitive of the, the places you're getting your pork, especially. Um, I'm a big lover of Pete's Paleo Bacon and they deliver it to my house and it comes in a big slab and you cut it off. Um, those are the best sources of bacon. So as much as you can get high quality bacon, do it. It's, it makes a difference. The best way to make your bacon is to preheat your oven to 400 degrees and take bacon, put it on a sheet, put it in the oven for about 15 minutes. I like it when it's crispy on the outside and a little gooey on the inside. And I take the extra fat because it's a really good source from Pete's Paleo. I pour it in a giant glass and I cook with it. And it's amazing and it lasts forever. Okay, happy underscore Jax with a Z asked what was my favorite cheat meal? And I like this question because this is my favorite food. Few people know this about me, but I could eat a whole cheesecake in one sitting. I'm quite in love with cheesecake, so if I could, I would have it every day, but I can't because I'm not so good with gluten and I'm really not good with cheese, and it's like all that in one. But for my birthday, I always have a slice of cheesecake, and sometimes throughout the year, on special occasions or celebratory events, cheesecake is my go-to. Real quick. Yes. When was the last time you ate a whole cheesecake? <laughs> Damn it, Blake. So when was I last in Memphis? Was it my birthday? Yeah. yeah. Was so <laughs> the last time I had a, I wouldn't say it was a full cheesecake, but it was a pretty chunky piece, actually two pieces, was on my birthday, which is right before Christmas, and I was in a coma. Like I ate two pieces of cheesecake from Cheesecake Corner in Memphis, Tennessee, and I passed out for a good eight hours, maybe even longer. And it was like 7 p.m. <laughs> uh, great question, Blake. You like just regular cheesecake straight up? Or like, what, like um, my cheesecake of choice is white chocolate cheesecake with caramel and blueberry. Oh, oh. Maybe blackberry. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so good. Okay, Lindsay Silverblatt tagged me in a picture on Twitter and asked about collagen and what you can use it for and what are the benefits. So collagen is a fantastic amino acid. Lysine is primarily the big component of collagen and it's just so great for your nails, your hair, for healing your gut, um, for health, for, oh my gosh, so many things. Um, even people say weight loss. I'm not quite sure. Some people say it helps with cellulite, so that's possibly 
possibly a great side effect. Um, collagen is just something that we kind of need in our bodies. And so the best way to get it is through food and not necessarily through just like our cosmetics. Collagen doesn't really get absorbed through the skin. So I always have bone broth. Bone broth, if you haven't heard of it, is a great way to get a bunch of amino acids and help heal your gut and help kind of give you guys like the tools you need for happier joints and happier, happier brain function and all that jazz. Um, so yeah, coll collagen is primarily composed of glycine. You can make little collagen jummy, <laughs> jummies. You can make little collagen gummies. And um, what's the brand that, oh, Vital Proteins. Vital Proteins is a really great brand. I know that people really love that kind of collagen is a high quality collagen. And so that's what people make a lot of their gummies with. Um, or you could just make bone broth, but collagen is great. You can add it into protein shakes. You can add it into little mixes to kind of sneak some in throughout the day. I'm a believer in it and you can see if it works for you. It's a great way to get a little bit extra oomph with your nutrition, very nutritionally dense. All right, Megan Walsh asked about Advocare products. So Advocare is kind of like a big healthy food company that gives supplements to people to help lose weight. Um, I'm all about helping people in their lifestyle. So I'm not, I'm saying this with utmost respect for a company that might have the best intentions but there's many products um, that say they're very healthy, including Advocare Spark, that have things like sucralose, which is basically Splenda, and which is connected to high like insulin resistance, weight gain, liking more sugar, more than you did before, um, cancer, lots of things. That It's basically the worst artificial sweetener that you could ever put in your body. I hate Splenda. I am very adamant about everybody that I know cutting that out of their diet. And so I have a hard time believing that something that has that in it can be that healthy for you. So um, although maybe they have good intentions, there's really a lot of good marketing by Advocare to make something that is healthy, that really isn't very appealing to the mass, mass majority of people. So not a huge fan. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> you should always turn to real food before turning to supplements, hands down. Supplements have their place in our diet and in our life, depending on if you're an athlete or depending on if you need some extra nutritional support. But as far as a meal replacement or an energy supplement that's gonna change your life and help you lose weight, don't trust those things. Um, it's all about hard work, dedication, and really learning what real food for you means and Advocare Spark, in my opinion, has no place in anyone's life. Oh, I have my deodorant with me. Hold on, I'll be back. Okay, this is a question from Corey Levinson on my Instagram and she's done two of my challenges. She's on her second challenge and she wants to ask about um, at-home products. So like beauty products, skincare, and especially, specifically, deodorant. So what are my thoughts on deodorant and what kind do I use? Kind of a weird question, but we forget. We absorb everything we put in our skin. So if we're putting high, perfu high perfumes and toxins and all these beauty products that um, are man-made and very processed and not natural at all, it actually really does affect our health. And things like aluminum and deodorant are connected to cancer. They get stuck in our lymph and they kind of build up and they can cause toxicity. And we already live in a very toxic environment. And so it's really important to not just think about the foods you're eating as healing your body and keeping you healthy and fit and strong, but the things that we put on our skin and the things that we, we use every single day, shampoo, face wash, all those cosmetic products, um, they, if you're using them every day, you better believe they have an important role in your health. And so I recently kind of switched with one of my friends, Sydney, is a big believer in all this natural skincare, healthcare. And at first I thought she was totally crazy and hippie and that just keeping my Dove deodorant wouldn't be the worst thing ever. But I really do believe what she had to say is that it, the sooner we can get to all natural products, um, the better. So I love this deodorant. This is rock deodorant. And it's crazy, all it is, is sea salt. So it's a big thing of sea salt. And right when you get out of the shower, you put it in, you know, do your deodorant thing. <laughs> and it's supposed to keep you fresh and clean. And it does. And it, as long as you're using it consistently and you make sure that you have, um, 
you know, you give yourself kind of a grace period when your body adjusts. So if it's been dependent on certain deodorants, like don't give up after two or three days. Just be aware that you might need to throw on some extra lavender essential oil. But after the first couple days, your body does adjust. And this is a really great deodorant that you can use. And I think it's so great because all it is is sea salt. And I know that my body is healthier for it. And I'm getting rid of just one more toxin that's around us every single day. So yes, pay attention to your healthcare products, your cosmetics cosmetics and this is one that I found at Whole Foods but there's a couple different versions so the sea salt one I found very effective and I think that's saying something because I work out a lot so if I can get by with some sea salt deodorant I think anybody can that made me sound really smelly I'm really not smelly but I'm just <laughs> in a gym all day so it's just important for me to make sure that I don't smell and if this deodorant helps that then I'm all for it okay this concludes episode 3 of Ask M Thank goodness for my awesome cameraman, Blake, from Gorilla Capturing to make this the highest quality episode we have so far. And you can tune in every Thursday for the live Periscope um, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time, or you can just wait for the full episode, the edited version on Mondays. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please keep asking questions. I love what I'm hearing so far. These are great questions and I can't wait to answer more. I'll see you guys next week.